there was another um, another possible uh, barrier to the invasion. It was Yevgeny Primakov. You had a good relationship with Shevard Natsa, but Gorbachev asked his Middle East specialist, mm -hmm. Primakov, to travel yeah. to Baghdad, yeah. meet with Saddam. I think we received him two or three times at right. the White House, as I remember it. And did you worry that there was a gap between Shevard Natsa and Primakov and that the Soviets might turn on us and try to prevent this war no, from occurring? No, because uh, we knew where Gorbachev was, and he's the boss. Gorbachev didn't want us to start the war. He didn't vote. He, you know, they voted for the use of uh, of force resolution, all necessary means. In fact, that we got, I got that agreement from Gorbachev himself at his dacha outside of, of uh, Moscow. But they, they felt, I believe, that they could talk us out of actually starting the war. And they made many efforts to do that, Nick, not just with Primakov, but with uh, Gorbachev himself calling President Bush. I remember he called him a number of times. And, and then Besmertnik, after Shevardnadze resigned, and Besmertnik was the new foreign minister of the Soviet Union, he came at us several times. Said, you can't, this, first to, to moderate the, the air war, and second, don't start the ground war. First, don't start the air war, then moderate the, end the air war, don't start the ground war. How terrible this is gonna be. So they made every effort that they could uh, they had not, they, you know, they were not a part of the coalition in terms of troops or anything like that. But they worked on us pretty hard. But that would have been a terrible mistake for us to agree at that point. I mean, the truth of the matter is we didn't need them much after we got our use of force resolution through the Security Council uh, because there wasn't much they could do about it. One of the other issues we talked about this morning was we had this decisive victory in the desert, our troops, our coalition against Saddam Hussein, President Bush had to make a big decision. The road to Baghdad was open. Does he go down that road and occupy the Iraqi capital and try to take over the Iraqi government? Mm -hmm. He made this very important decision. And then we refought that issue over the next 12 years, and we refought it in 2003. Yeah. How do you look at that whole decision in the, with the benefit of this, of hindsight? Well, well I'm convinced we made, President Bush made the right decision. <clears throat> Uh, we uh, we used to get a, we used to get. By the way, there was not one one advisor to President Bush 41 who thought we should go to Baghdad. Not one. We were all right there. All of his top advisors. We were right there in the Oval Office talking to Schwarzkopf on the telephone in the region when we made the decision to end the war. We were killing literally uh, thousands of Iraqi troops fleeing up the Highway of Death, and Colin said and. And uh, even Schwarzkopf agreed at the time it's, time, it's time to pull the plug. We've done what we said we we're gonna do. And so there was, n nobody, was at all, nobody was agitating at all about going to Baghdad, and our military really didn't want any part of that. They didn't want to have to occupy that great big Arab country. We were concerned about it from a political standpoint for fear that it would create all sorts of ethnic tensions and unrest and so forth, the kind of thing that we faced after the 2003 invasion. So I'm convinced that we, that we made the right, the right decision. Uh, for a number of years after we got out, we used to get questions about why didn't you guys take care of Saddam when you had the chance? Uh, and, and guess what? After 2004, 2003, we never got those questions anymore. <laughs>